Welcome to my build of a Piper Cub J3. I'm now moving on to constructing part of the fuselage, or the, the whole of the fuselage. Um, I had been working on the wings uh, up until this point, uh, but I got to a point where I didn't want to do any more on the wings until I'd got the exact sort of dimensions and profile here for uh, where the wings connect on. Um, I found a few discrepancies in the plans, um, the odd mistake, but mainly due to, I think, scanning and, and printing, just the, a little bit of stretch um, on, on some of the plans in, in, in both directions, in actual fact. So I've, uh, I've cut out roughly this, uh, this one side, and uh, prior to cutting it out, I just checked the overall size against the, the lugs on these crossformers. Um, I've done all the crossformers, you'll have seen hopefully on a previous video me cutting those out and preparing them. Um, I've marked the, uh, the number of the, uh, uh, the format and whether it's left or right, just so I know the position. So I've, marked, I've laid them out. Prior to cutting this side I just checked these lugs, uh, oops, that one, checked these lugs to make sure I'd got the overall width correct. And now what I'm doing is going to go along and just measure these um, lugs here against the plan just to make sure I, I don't cut out too much and you can see here I've, I've gone along and just ticked that and uh, filled it in and, and there's the odd one where I've made a little bit of a, a, a change but once I've gone along uh, measured these I'm confident that I'm going to end up with it all the right size I will cut this out and I can then use this um, as a template for doing the other side. I've labelled this one right and the outer, so now that's the outside. Um, and I've also got to make up some doublers uh, which just give strength around the top here for taking the loading from the, uh, from the wings. So I'll get on and do that now and uh, yeah, quite exciting to start working on the, on the fuselage. And once I've got the fuselage more or less complete, I guess, I'll come back and just finish off the wings and make sure they, they fit. It's just around this central section um, on the wings where I, I haven't quite finished yet. Okay, well the time has come now to start to assemble the fuselage. I've completed the two sides um, and all of the cross pieces and I've tested and they all fit nicely and I've just spent a few minutes dry mounting everything making sure I know how I'm going to, um, how I'm going to clamp it uh, I've got the clamps. Um, so, uh, just a, a couple of changes I've made on the sides of the fuselage. This uh, top doubler, I've just extending it, extended it down here. Originally it's finished here and hasn't got the window bars. But I just felt this was a little bit thin and could do with just a little bit of extra strength. Maybe I'm being over cautious. And it hasn't added a lot of weight. Um, I've also added a a doubler here on the front uh, with kind of a locking lug uh, which will go into the uh, into the firewall. Um, again I just felt this needed a little bit of extra strength that's now six mil rather than three mil um, holding the firewall. The, the engine specified for this is um, uh, point, uh, up to 0.35 I think or is it point 0.25 but I'm actually sticking a, a Thunder Tiger 42 in so it's going to have a little bit more power um, than uh, it was perhaps designed for so I've just put a little bit of strength I mean I'll see how that engine goes and I can always down, downsize if needed um, so I've worked out how I'm going to clamp it I've got everything prepared I'll get on and uh, it'll be great to see it start, start to take shape Okay, well that's all nicely glued now and uh, it's all clamped up. Careful not to put on too much pressure as these cross formers do just start to bow a little bit. Um, so we'll just leave that dry, to dry now and, uh, and then we'll get on with the tail area. 
Okay, well I've been getting on quite a lot with the, uh, with the fuselage and um, I've now put in these um, rear formers um, to pull in the tail or the end of the plane and this, this block at the end here. Um, one thing I have done um, is you'll notice I've got the, uh, the slot here and the slot here um, for the stringer um, but I didn't cut these slots I wanted to wait until I'd got all the cross pieces in and then actually line it up to make sure uh, that they were in a dead straight line. I, I think there was always the fear that if I cut them all at once I'd end up with a crooked stringer or a little bit of a bend in that. So I've still got those to do. Um, what else? Uh, I've done the, uh, the, the front pieces here um, for around the, uh, the cockpit. And, uh, and done a little bit of work on the nose. So that's all starting to look nice now. The, um, the balsa here on the back, um, the, I've just rough cut these, uh, which hold the, um, uh, the tail plane in, in, uh, in place. I'm still just trying to work out how they go, whether they go flush with this edge um, or whether they're just stepped in like that. Okay, so I, I think what I'm going to do is probably just uh, glue them there flush like that um, and then just chamfer off this corner so that the, uh, the covering film just comes off off this bottom edge, picks up the stringer and then goes straight on to, to this bit of balsa here. Um, I'm sure that'll be fine. The plans didn't give a lot of uh, information about that. Um, and then once both these bits of balsa are on, the, the tail plane just sits on the top there. So it'll be nice to, to get that all level and, and set up. Okay, well the fuselage now is, is more or less finished. Um, I've fitted these stringers and they've, they've gone in nice and straight. I live on the J3 curb how these stringers just bend up here for the turtle deck. I really like that. Um, and also I was kind of questioning how I should be putting on these uh, pieces of balsa that support the tail plane. Well, I put them in flush with the sides here and just chamfered that so the, the, the covering will come up and just pick up onto that stringer. I think that'll be fine. And to be honest, you probably won't see much of it because it'll be under the tail plane. Um, I've also made a, a servo mount, just a plate that will screw in. I'll uh, take the servos there. Um, I put on a, a second firewall um, it's, uh, I mean that's on the plans, it's not, not my decision. And um, I put in the engine mount. I haven't glued the engine mounts in yet because I'm still questioning the engine size and whether I'm a bit daft putting a, a, a Thunder Tiger 42 in and whether I should downsize it a little bit. So I'm kind of leaving that. I, what I'll probably do is get everything fitted out and then see where the centre of gravity is and, and how that engine impacts um, on it. Uh, the other final jobs I'll need to do to this is a little bit of sheeting on the nose here and the whole of the sheeting on the underside. Um, but that I'm leaving right till uh, the very end till I've got all the servos fitted and the control linkages so that I've got easy access um, to, to where I need to get to, both for the control surfaces and, uh, and for the throttle. Okay, so the next job moving on from the fuselage is to, um, to get the wings completed, which I've already started, but uh, now I've got the fuselage um, in this advanced state, or virtually finished, I can, uh, I can fit the wings and make sure that this trailing edge and everything is, is, is spot on.